Okay, let's uh, continue on this project. We want to start adding some settings right now. In my index HTML file, let's just before the fretboard up here, let's add another div and give it a class of settings like this. And inside here, the first thing I want to make is an instrument selector, a drop down menu where you can select the uh, bass guitar, five string, four string guitar, standard tuning, whatever instruments you want to put in there. We're going to do that. First, I'm going to make a label. That's going to be for, let's call it instrument selector. And we are going to put in selected instrument. Like this. And then we're going to make an input here, or actually a select element. And we are going to give it the name of instrument selector as well. And an ID of the same. Inside here, we want to put some options. But I think we should create those options dynamically. Uh, we don't have any data to do that from yet, but uh, we'll make that in the JavaScript in just a moment here. Uh, let's check out our browser. So you can see it's, it shows up here and uh, it's black text and uh, there's nothing here. It doesn't really look that good. So let's just make some basic styles for, for that first. Let's go to the style CSS and up here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target the, the settings. And what do we want to do with that? Let's just, first of all, let's display it as flex like that. Then we're going to set the text color to white. And at least we can read it. And let's give it a padding of, let's say, 20 pixels. I want to give it a border at the bottom. Border button. Uh, one pixel solid and this color here dark gray and let's give it a background color of 28 28 28 save that go back and see what's going on well it looks a little bit better now just gonna scooch it over to the to the right here uh, now you can see what's going on. It looks like a, a panel, a uh, settings panel. That's good enough for now. And then we want to add some options that we can put in this drop down here in the select element. Um, and we can do that from our app.js. We need some data though. We need some different tuning presets. So here we already have the guitar tuning constant with uh, the tuning of the guitar. But let's add some more stuff. Let's uh, create a new constant. And let's call it uh, instrument tuning presets and let's set that equal to an object this time and let's just take the first one that's a guitar the one we already have add that property and then I'm just gonna grab this one and copy that yep and then let's add another one on the next line. Let's say that we want a bass guitar and we want that to be a four string bass. Four strings. And we have to set up an array for that as well. And I happen to know that it's seven, two, nine, and, 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 and four. That's the E string, just like on the guitar. And I'm going to set up a couple of presets here. Uh, and I um, I calculated this by going, like, I know that uh, it's a G string, so I calculate uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's G. And you saw that in a previous video as well. So you can add whatever instruments you like here. I'm just going to continue and add a few more. So now we created this object with uh, some instrument tuning presets. I added guitar, bass, four string bass, five string bass, ukulele. You can add as many as you like. You can add a guitar with a drop D tuning, whatever you, you want in here. It's, uh, it doesn't really matter how many you have. 
So every time we select one of these in our select dropdown, we want to have, uh, we want to set that equal to the currently selected instrument. So let's make a variable for that. Let's call it let selected instrument. Let that be equal to, let's like start with the guitar as a standard. So let's just set it to guitar. Okay, good. And we're not going to need this in just a moment. So now we set up the data that we want to populate this um, this drop down with, because right now it's not much fun. You can't select any presets here. So let's go back to our code and do that. Let me just scooch over here so we can see what's going on while we type in the code. Um, we want to use this instrument tuning presets constant and uh, populate it with these the names here. So down here, just before setup event listeners, I'm going to add a new method. And let's call that setup selected instrument selector. Let's make like this. First, we need to grab this so we can actually populate it with something. Let's all the way at the top here, create a new, we already have the fretboard. Let me here create a new constant. And let's call it selected instrument selector. Like this. And we're going to grab that with document query selector. And what was it called? Let's go back to the HTML. I can see it has an ID of instrument selector. That makes sense add that up here so id instrument selector so now hopefully we got that uh, i'm going to use this one i'm going to grab that and go back down to the method that we started creating here so i want to loop through this this constant here the instrument instrument tuning presets good thing i just saved myself some time in the future so for every instrument in that we're going to go for, we're going to loop over that. And it is an object. So we're going to use, let's type instrument in, uh, instrument tuning presets. Right? We're going to do something here. I want to create an instrument option. And that should be a new element. That should be an option element because we want to add it to the select this one right here right so inside here we're gonna add a lot of options so here I'm gonna go let let's call it instrument option and remember we can create a new element with the method here we have down here on our tools object so let's call tools and let's go create element and we want to create an option element. And this time, oops, need to put that in like this. And this time we actually want to pass something into it because we want some content for it and we want the instrument content. So that's like, um, this is the instrument in instrument tuning presets. So we go to our um, data up here, our instrument tuning presets constant here, which is an object and we loop through every single every single property here and this property will be the instrument down here so we're going to set the content of the option element to the name of the instrument okay and then after that we can go to the selected instrument selector i think that's what we called it yep it is and then we can append the child to that one what do we want to append instrument option like this let's save that and see what happens nothing happens at all because we didn't set up this one so i'm just going to go up here in my init and after set up the event listeners actually i'm going to set this up before we can set up event listeners so i'm going to go this and something like that still nothing happened so something happened i can see i can there's actually content in this one but there's they're just empty strings. Let's go to the elements. You can see here if I in settings, I can see we have options inside, but they're empty. So let's go back to the code and see what happened here. 
So I just found out that I made another spelling mistake in an earlier video way back. Um, this is the length. So we're not getting all of this. This is not, it's, it's going to put them in, but it's not going to put any content in, uh, because it's not going to understand this. So let's type it correctly here, like that. Save that, and then you can see. And when I was debugging this, I also just added a little, um, I console log the instrument just to see that it actually got the instrument from up here, and it did, but I just didn't understand why it didn't add it, why it didn't create an element, why the element was was empty, and that was because length is spelled differently. But um, that's what happens sometimes. Let's get back to what it's really about. I'm going to remove this console log again, save it, and now you can see that we uh, we get all of the instruments here. We can select um, we can select them here, but nothing happens because we still haven't hooked up an event listener. So to do that, we need to add an event listener to uh, to the drop down here. Let let's try do that. We already grabbed it up here, so we already have access to it, and we already have a set of event listeners uh, method down here. After this, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the selected instrument selector and add an event listener to it. And the event we want to listen for is a change event. And then we want to fire a function. So here we can set the currently selected instrument. And we already made this up here. We uh, call it selected instrument. So let's take that one. And down here we can go and we can say that this one, the selected instrument, every time we change it, should be equal to the event target and in order to get the event we have to pass it in here of course so that's going to be the event target value so that's the value of the selected item in in this one um, then let's just try and see if that works I'm just going to console console log selected instrument All right, let's save that, go back here. Every time we select something, we console log this selected instrument variable we have up here. Um, that's not enough though. We want to also be able to set the number of strings because when we change from, from a guitar to a bass, and we know this is a four string bass, we want to do that as well. And we can do that in a pretty cool way. Uh, up here we have a constant number of strings. First of all, I want to, let me take this one here. Let me just move it down here because we want to use this stuff here. Uh, we already have the selected instrument and let's move it down here. And instead of having it as a constant, we want to use let instead. So we can change it later on without getting an error. Um, there's no reason to, to, to hard code it with six or whatever. We can't do that anymore because now we're selecting a new instrument here. And, uh, but a cool way is just getting the length of this. So we can take, uh, the instrument tuning presets. Right. And then we can, um, take the selected instrument. And that is the one that updates every time we, uh, we change something here and then we're just going to take the length of that let's see if I can spell it this time something like that so now it's going to take it's going to look up in the in the presets here it's going to find the selected instrument here and then it's going to take the length of that and we know that the length of that is the number of strings so that should work as well so down here if we go back to our event listener I can remove this console log and then we can set the number of strings to that value that we just selected. So number of strings should be equal to exactly the same as we had up here before. So that's instrument tuning presets and selected instrument and the length of that. And nothing's going to happen yet. Uh, because we still haven't set up the fretboard. So we can select something here as much as we want, but nothing's going to happen. We have to, down here, we have to set up the fretboard again. So I'm going to go this, 
set up fret like that. Oh, we need some parentheses here. All right, let's see if it works. So I'm going to change the base. Oh, something's going on. Something's totally happening. It's that, That's not good. It's just adding and adding and adding strings and dots and this and that. So that's not what we want. And that's because up here in the setup fretboard, we, uh, we should probably take the whole fretboard div and just empty it. So the way to do that, I'm just going to grab the fretboard and I'm going to set the inner HTML to an empty string like this. If I save that, it looks good again. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to change the base. Wow, it changes the base, or at least it looks like this is a D. Okay, something's wrong here. I can see that. Uh, 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 uh. Four string base, a five string base. Yeah, something's definitely going on here. Let's see if we can find out what that is. It works. You change the number of strings and everything fits, but the notes are not totally correct. So only for the guitar. So the reason that uh, the notes are wrong is we forgot to change something in the, um, over here in our set of fretboard because we're still using the the guitar tuning that we that we set up up here. I'm just going to delete that and save it. And then we're going to get an error, of course. That's expected. So down here in our setup fretboard, uh, when we set up the note name, we don't want to use the guitar tuning anymore uh, because we already we already have the instrument tuning presets and the selected instrument defined, and then we can just use the use that instead. So we can go ahead and say instrument tuning presets, and then we're going to find on that one. We're going to find the oh. That's confusing. We're going to find the selected instrument. And I in that on, on that particular string. So let me save that. And that should hopefully work. Let's see. So we have we have the guitar now. It's E, B, G, so on. Let's change the bass. Let's see. That's an E, A, D, G. That's that's that looks right. And a five string bass and a ukulele like that. So every time it changes, it sets up the fretboard again with the new data that we're getting from from this object right here. So um, I just want to go over what we uh, did and learned in this video because it's pretty confusing. Probably we had a few problems with some box here and there. So the first thing we did, we added a, uh, a select element here and then inside that we added all the different properties to that. We populated that down here in the setup selected instrument selector. We created an element and we got that back from our tools object down here. We appended that child to the instrument option uh, selector in the HTML here. So then we added it to the event listener. So we took the selected instrument selector, the drop down, we added a change event listener to that. And then every time something happens, every time something changes there, we 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 created a new variable called selected instrument and we're gonna we change that to uh, to that value of the selected instrument. And then we just dynamically set the number of strings to be in the length of that selected instrument that come from this object up here. So that's basically what we're doing. And then we're setting up the fretboard again down here. So every time we select something up here, it just sets up the fretboard with the new data. That's it for now. But join me in the next video where we will set up a radio button selector up here in the settings area that will determine whether you will see the, the flat notes or the sharp notes. That should be pretty easy. But join me in the next video for that, please. See ya.